Hey Annex to Youth, it is great to be with you all today. I'm Cece, I'm gonna be sharing with you this evening and I'm super grateful to be with you all. I'm sad that we are not able to be in the same room. I wish, I wish, I wish we were all together. I was watching the Easter video this um, past Sunday. It brought me to tears because I was watching the This Is Living video. I got to see some of your faces and it was just awesome um, getting to see some of you all and it just made me miss you. Made me miss you even more. We love you guys, we miss you. Um, we are constantly praying for you. Um, we cannot wait to be back together with you. Um, but until then, we're gonna keep sharing on here. Um, it's been over a month now, been over a month since we've been together. I haven't gotten to catch up with a lot of you, which has been so sad and disappointing. Um, but I wanted to hear from you guys what you've been up to. And I also want to share with you what I've been up to. So let's go on a journey. Okay, so if you follow me on Instagram, um, you know that I like Legos and um, I took apart my Harry Potter castle and then um, I proceeded to put it all back together. Hey, there it is. It took me two weeks. It took me two weeks. Was it worth it? My fingers were dead. I don't know if it was worth it, but hey, it, um, it passed the time. So that's one thing I've been up to. Now I'm in my living room. It's where I've been spending a lot of my time because it's where the TV is. Um, yep, we've been watching a lot of Netflix. Also, Connor's here. Let's see if I can get him in frame. There he is. Hi, Connor. He's working on CLC stuff. The light is terrible, but that's okay. Um, if you're interested in CLC, talk to Connor. Um, we built this shelf while well, Connor mostly did. I helped a little bit. That was our weekend project. We've been doing some things around the house. And I'm gonna see if we can find Luna, my rabbit. If you don't follow her on Instagram, you should. At Luna, the lion head underscore Hughes. It's a long name, but you know, that's what was available. Where is she? Let's see if she's under the coat. No, where is she? Oh, she's walking over there. Okay. <gasps> Luna, come say hi to all the pet kids. <gasps> oh, very friendly. This is Luna, guys. She's the best. She's five pounds. She's a lionhead bunny, and I love her so much. Happy Easter. So that's a little bit of what I have been up to for the last several days, month now. It's crazy. Um, let me know in the comments below. Let us know what you have been up to. Um, share your projects, the things that you've been doing, the schoolwork you've been working on. We want to know it all. Let us know in the comments below. This week we are starting a new series. It's called Home Alone because we're home and sometimes it feels like we're alone in this season. And so today I want to share with you about some of the basics of how to live out this life um, of faith in the middle of quarantine. We're going to dive right into that. How do we stay connected to God during this season? Our relationship with God should never be dependent on whether or not we're able to go to church or whether or not we're able to hang out with people or hear a sermon. Um, Cause as we've learned recently, those are things that we might not have access to all the time. Our relationship with God, like relationship with anyone requires our own personal effort. And the truth is, is that God loves us no matter what he always will. But like any relationship, we have to put in some work. So here are six, quick ideas for how to live out your faith during quarantine. Number one, thankfulness. First Thessalonians 5.18 says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Give thanks in all circumstances. Our circumstances right now are very different for everyone. Some people, they have family, member, family members who have lost jobs, we don't know what the school year is going to look like. We have a lot of uncertainty right now. There's all kinds of things that are happening. But whatever our circumstances are, it's important for us to give thanks. Find ways to thank God for those things. So thank God for the things that give you joy. Um, it might be small things like thank you God for breakfast. Thank you God for my dog. Um, thank you God for, um, well for me it would be Luna, my rabbit. Um, thank God for the small things that maybe give you joy throughout the day. You can kind of shift your perspective. Also, make an effort to thank the people in your life that are helping you out, that you are spending time with, um, your family. Trust me, it makes a huge difference if you take the time to thank your parents for the things that they are doing for you because it might not really seem like they're doing a lot, but they are. They are doing a lot for you. So make that extra effort 
to thank them. As you think about the things that you're thankful for, write them down. Get out a journal, a piece of paper, um, a note in your phone, and write down like five things that you're thankful for today. And do that every once in a while, maybe every day. Maybe that's in regular practice that you wanna do. Number two, scripture. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, all scripture is God breathed and profitable for teaching, for proof, for correction, and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. It is so important for us to be reading the Bible right now. You guys, I cannot stress this enough. As the world turns to fear and hopelessness, it is important for us to turn to the words of hope and peace that can only come from scripture. Reading scripture allows you to take steps towards Jesus and to learn how to become more like him in this season, which is so important because that's what people need right now. If you don't know where to start with reading the Bible, I would encourage you if you follow us on social media, on Instagram or Facebook, to follow along with our lunch break devotionals. We are going through different devotionals every single day um, and we do it around lunchtime each day. We have a video that goes along with a Devo that you can follow along with in the YouVersion Bible app. So if you haven't downloaded that yet, you should. Um, if you have a device that you can do that with, so download it, follow along with us on Instagram, Facebook, soon to be other places as well. All right, number three, prayer. James 5, 16 says, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Prayer is simply having a conversation with God, guys. Prayer is not complicated, not scary, it doesn't need to be fancy, it is something that anyone can do. We all know that in order to build a relationship with someone, you have to talk to them. In order to continue to build your relationship with God, you have to talk to Him. Share about your struggles, confess things to Him. All those things that you wrote down that you were thankful for, share those with God. Ask. God of things that you need or things that people in your life need. God wants to know it all. He wants to talk to you about all of that. Not only does prayer offer you an opportunity to share with God, but it offers up an opportunity for God to speak to you as well because this is a conversation. So I would encourage you to engage in prayer during this time. Pray with your life group. Um, through a Zoom call or share prayer requests in your group chat. We want you to get connected to your life groups so that you guys are sharing together. All right, number four, worship. Isaiah 12, 5 says, Sing praises to the Lord for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. So worship. Worship is the act of praising God for who he is. Um, and just because we can't be together to sing, which is a way that we often worship together is by singing, doesn't mean that we can't worship. Now, you are more than welcome and we encourage you to put on worship music in your room, turn on Spotify or YouTube or Apple Music, wherever you get your, your music from. Turn that on, put on your favorite worship song and worship and sing at home on your own. We would love for you to do that. But we also want you to know that there is more to worship than just singing. Worship is a lifestyle. Worship is a way of life, and we want you to be able to engage with that while you're at home. Colossians 3.23 says, Whatever you do, work heartily, as for the Lord and not for men. Anything you do can be worship. Your schoolwork, your chores, spending time with your family, these can all be acts of worship if you are doing them for God. Change your mindset so that when you start these things, you're not just checking something off the list, but instead you are giving it to God as an act of worship. Number five, serve. First Peter 4.10 says, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. It's important for us to serve people always, but especially right now that things are a little bit crazy. This means going above and beyond to put others first. 
there are many ways that we've seen people on social media or in the news that they're serving others during this COVID-19 crisis. I've seen people who are making donations to hospitals or other organizations, um, people making food donations for the homeless, people um, sewing masks to donate to others. These people are going above and beyond to put others first. Think about how you can put others first in this season. And I think this can start at home. Now maybe you do wanna do a big thing that's gonna help um, your community or help the world, and that's awesome. But I also think it's really important for you to serve the people in your home right now. And I'm not talking about just doing the chores that are already your responsibility to do. You should just be doing those, let's be real. Just do them. I'm talking about going above and beyond what is expected of you. What are some things that your parents or guardian, whoever is responsible for you, are doing to keep things running at your house? And what can you do to help with those things? Your, your parent is the person who makes dinner all the time. Maybe you can make dinner. Or maybe your parent is the person who goes shopping and maybe you are helping them bring the groceries in and if they're wiping everything down, taking care of that, whatever um, they need help with, go that extra mile. Maybe it means playing with your younger siblings instead of fighting with them and just creating a great atmosphere in your home. Um, that's a great way to serve. Whatever it might be, it's important for us to serve the people closest to us because sometimes they are the hardest to love, especially right now when we are in such close quarters. And finally, number six, honor your parents. Now this goes with serving as well. But listen to this, Exodus 20, 12 says, honor your father and mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. So when we talk about parents in this final section, I'm talking about whoever's responsible for you at home. So it might be your mom or dad or mom and dad, guardian, grandparents, aunt and uncle, cousin, older sibling, whoever that might be. When I say parents, that's who I'm referring to. So this applies to everyone. What does it mean to honor someone? It means to show them respect, to show that you value them a lot. So this definitely ties into serving, but this also encompasses your attitude, how um, you respond to them, the way that you treat them, how well you listen, um, and abiding by whatever expectations that they have of you. If your parents ask you to do something, then you should be doing it. You should be doing it right away instead of being like, oh yeah, 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 I'll get to that later. Like, honor your parents. Be like, yes, I can do that. Or communicating with them saying, okay, I can't do it right this minute, but I'm gonna do it at this time and then following through on that. These are some good tips, good tips. Now, you might wonder in this moment, um, but what if my parent or guardian doesn't honor me? It's true, not everyone has a parent um, that shows them love and honor. So why would God ask you to honor someone like that? In scripture, we're called to be more like Jesus. This past weekend, we celebrated Easter, and if you know that story, you know that Jesus had government authorities over him that did not show him any honor. They ridiculed and beat him and executed him. Jesus honored the authorities over him despite how they treated him, and Jesus actually honored the people closest to him that turned their backs on him. He showed love and understanding and compassion to everyone. You honoring your parents is something that God loves to see. So make the effort to honor your parents with your attitude and your actions this week. If you're in a situation where it feels impossible to honor your parents um, or guardians, let your life group leader know. We want to walk with you through this. We always want you to be safe. And so we'd love to walk with you through anything that you might be going through. So always feel free to share that with your leader. All right, guys, that is six ideas for how to live out your faith during quarantine. And we would love for you to pick a couple of those things this week to try out. Hopefully those things inspire you. Right after this video ends, I want you to text your life group leader and let them know which of the things on this list you are going to do this week to live out your faith. Remember to set reasonable goals, guys. If you are not doing any of these things right now, there's no judgment, but Make sure you're not being like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do all six of them this week because honestly, that's not always the best idea. Start small, take one step, one or two things that you know you can do, practicing thankfulness um, or practicing prayer every day um, or practicing prayer a couple times a week. Maybe just starting small because this is a journey 
and a journey takes steps. You don't have to do leaps. Let your leader know what you're gonna do and also comment below on Instagram, wherever you're at, put in the comments what you're gonna be doing this week to live out your faith. I love you guys, I miss you, I hope you're doing all right, I hope you guys are healthy, we're praying for you, um, and I hope, hope, hope to see you soon. See you later.